Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be making this very nice inlaid picture frame. Now, this is quite a long video, but that's because it's a step-by-step -step video and I'm going to show you every process. So let me know what you think about this project in the description down below. And also, I'd love to hear from you what you would like to see me make in future videos. If you like this build and you learned something, make sure you give it a like. If you're new to this channel, feel free to subscribe. I do a lot of projects like this. I hope you enjoyed this build. So I've just sanded four lovely ripple maple veneers to about two and a half, three, just under three mil thick. And the grit I have on the drum sander is 150. Once I use a scraper on that and add a finish, the grain's gonna pop even more. Now the core of the picture frame is gonna be made out of Baltic birch plywood. And that's because I don't wanna waste this lovely rippled wood and the paduk. I don't need to make the whole frame out of that. I can have a core and then veneer over it. Not like I'm cheaping out because Baltic birch is good quality and expensive. It's just I wanna save the real wood for, you know, more projects. Now, this Baltic birch plywood actually has a very slight bow to it. If this happens to you, you might be tempted to plane it over the jointer and thickness it straight again. Now, I'd be very cautious with doing that. I don't recommend it because a bit like real wood, uh, plywood does have stress on the inside and once you start planing layers away, it will move in different directions. So, what I'm gonna do is actually leave it as it is and uh, veneer on top of the convex side. As the glue dries and shrinks, it's gonna bring the size up and actually flatten the board back out. Normally when you're veneering sheet goods, you wanna veneer both sides to keep it stable. If you veneer just one side, you'll find it will cup upwards. But in this case, I actually want the wood to move. And because it's bowing outwards, if I glue the veneer on the right side, it will kind of warp the wood back and straighten it up. So I hope that makes sense, hope it was helpful. I'm gonna get gluing. Now I've got four strips of plywood with a veneer of ripple maple glued on top. Now I already planed one side on the jointer and I'm going to use that flat reference face to reference off the fence now on the table saw and uh, trim it to size. I want the width of these strips to be four centimetres and the Padu glipping either side will be around five mil.
Okay, so just to update you, now I've got four components that consist of a plywood core, I've veneered some ripple maple veneer on top, and I've lipped the edges with Padoo. Now you just saw me there playing the Padoo lipping down, and now it's time to completely smooth the surface. Now if any of you have worked with Padoo before, especially working with Padoo with a lighter coloured wood, you may have experienced some sanding bleeding when uh, sanding the Padoo. To explain that a bit clearer, that's when you're sanding a darker coloured wood next to a lighter coloured wood and the dark wood sawdust kind of gets embedded in the lighter wood's grain. So in this case, if I were to sand this Padoo, it's quite likely that the red sawdust will get into the maple grain and then you get this kind of horrible staining, blending, which isn't that nice. There's a few ways to overcome this mixing, staining issue with the sawdust, and that is depending on your projects, you can pre-finish the lighter coloured wood, so then, you know, the sawdust doesn't actually get into the grain. You can mask it off with masking tape while you're sanding the Padoo, but one of the best options instead of all of those is to use a cabinet scraper or a card scraper and that should allow me to get a very smooth surface without worrying about the sawdust issue. A cabinet scraper is a good idea also because I'm using quite figured wood and some curly wood and a cabinet scraper won't tear out the grain. So my plan is to scrape all the surfaces smooth and then I'll get a really nice clean edge between the Padoo and the maple and I'll show you the results. I'm getting more and more excited about this build the more I do onto it. I just sanded a taper onto the strips as you would have seen me there. I raised up one side of the wood with a piece of MDF and then thread it through the drum sander, meaning it sanded an angle on it. Now that extra process and time to do the taper, the client might not even notice it, but I think it adds a lot to it. It's just such a subtle, you know, tapering towards a picture or a mirror in my case. I think it will look great and it'll just, I think it just adds another dimension to the piece. So now I'm going to route out the slot before I cut the mitres because if I did it after I cut the mitres then it might tear out the grain and I want those mitres to be as clean as possible. Now I'm going to do something slightly different on the router table and that's because I really don't want the grain to tear out at all especially on the show face. If there's any slight tear out when you put the glass against the rebate you're definitely going to see those gaps. So what I've done is I've positioned the fence about half a millimetre behind the cutter and I'm going to feed the piece of wood through the wrong way. You're always meant to feed from right to left and, uh, and I'll encourage you to do that. And the reason you feed from right to left is because you're going against the cutting motion of the bit. If you went with it, then it will grab the wood and pull it into the machine. But the reason I'm feeding it the wrong way is because the cutter is exposed by such a tiny amount, there's not actually enough wood there for the bit to grab onto. I'm only going to do one pass in reverse just to scribe a line and then I'm going to move the fence back so I can cut more material and then I'll feed it in the right way but I won't need to worry about tear out because I've already scribed the line with the first pass. So I hope that makes sense. I'm going to do that now. Okay, so they're the scribe lines. Hopefully the camera is picking them up. They're very subtle, but it's just enough not to make this wood tear out. I've already done a test cut here. As you can see, this scribe line kind of creates a shoulder. So when I remove this much material, it's not chipping out this face here.
Okay, so the picture frame's all glued up, and I made this jig to cut splines for the picture frame, and also splines for boxes. If you want to check out that video, I'll put a card on top of the screen now, or a link in the description down below. So I'm going to sand this spline down about a quarter of a millimetre each time until it fits just right. Alright, so I'm going to cut four of these out. I only need to sand one piece because I'll get all the splines out of that one. One tip, maybe it's not a tip, precaution I should tell you is when you're working with Paduke, if you put it out in the sun, UV light makes it go brown. If you watched the channel a while ago, I made this picture frame. All the squares are made out of Paduke, and look how brown they've got. I still like the picture frame, but it's much less vibrant than this uh, Paduke that I just milled up. So, Paduke does brown over time, but you can prevent it from browning quicker if you don't, you know, expose it to UV light. Same as Purple Heart as well, the, the diamonds are Purple Heart and they've gone the same colour as the Paduk, which is funny and annoying. I'm going to try and get some glue in these holes. It's going to be pretty difficult. I'm mainly going to put a lot of glue on the spline itself. I just want to get it around the edge. It will help seal up any gaps. Beautiful. I just remembered Erwin sent me these corner clamps uh, for the Erwin one-handed grip clamps. Now these are sort of made for carcasses and, and box making. However, if I only use one side of it, for gluing up the mitres you could use both of them, but for gluing in the splines I just need this centre one. So I'm going to put it on one side of the clamp. Okay, so hopefully, so I don't want to do it too much. There we go. So now the spline is being pushed in. That's very good, perfect.
And there we have the picture frame. I applied three coats of chestnut products hard wax oil and then buffed it after. And uh, the ripple maple looks absolutely fantastic. The ripples, I hope, I hope the camera can pick it up, but I am in love with this wood. And the Paduk obviously looks amazing. I added Paduk spines because I wanted that area to be quite subtle and I wanted all the attention to be on the maple inlay. Obviously when you add a finish on end grain, it's darker than the side grain. So you can see the splines, which look very nice. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please share it with your friends, subscribe, like, comment, everything you wanna do. I wanna thank my patrons for continuously helping support the channel and allowing me to upload two videos every single week. So yeah, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in a couple of days for the next one.